Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's episode of Game Poke, the show where we cover gaming related topics and talk a load about bollocks. And today's bollocks can wait a minute because I just want to say, see this set? See this set? It's called a set, isn't it? I haven't worn it in a long time. I was going through some stuff recently and I found this with the collection and it was covered, and that was a travesty because this was donated to the channel by Marceau Blatard. He's sent a bunch of stuff to this channel in the past. Antique Kraken has. Frenchy has. Too many people to name everyone, all right? So I just want to quickly say thank you to anyone that's ever sent anything to this channel. This is a small time channel. It's amazing anyone's ever sent anything. It's amazing anyone's ever spent any money to do so. You know what I mean? It's fucking nuts. So to everyone, I feel like I don't say it enough and I probably will always feel that way. Thank you so much for sending stuff. And I'm wearing this hat today to show how fucking happy I am that I get such cool stuff. I never ask for it. That's what's truly awesome. It's just, wow, I stuff great. There's a good reason to keep doing YouTube, eh? You got me cornered. Any hoops, so today we're talking about Master System games with amazing graphics. I was gonna do the best Master System games with the best graphics, but I thought, no, because I keep changing my sodding mind, so I've just picked Five. ones at random that I think have truly awesome graphics for one reason or another. I've tried to pick some different ones. So I would would have liked to have said Miracle Warriors, but I feel like I talk about that game too much, so we're not gonna. Another good example is Fantasy Star. That That's obvious. So we're not covering it. You see what I mean? I want to do some games that you might not know about, or at least ones that don't get talked about as much. Certainly on this channel. So without further ado, let's get on to our first game! I don't know why I said it like that. I can't seem to stop myself. Shit. Dynamite Heady. Yes, believe it or not, there was a Dynamite Heady on the Master System. In Brazil! There wasn't anywhere else. It's a fucking tech toy game, I believe. It's one of them games I would love to have, but it's just not going to happen. Luckily, thanks to Marso Blatard, once again, I have the ability to play it on this Everdrive and show you some game footage. Now, before we get onto that game, as you can see, I haven't even bothered putting the game footage up for it yet. The Mega Drive port is sensational. The graphics are fantastic. You can't be denied. The Mega Drive one is brilliant. It looks brilliant, sounds brilliant, plays brilliant, is brilliant. Now we're going to see the 8-bit version. So bear in mind, it will not look as good, but it's not the same console. We're going from 16-bit to 8-bit. Now, would you imagine something with that much shit going on the screen would look good on a Master System? You'd think it'd be a bit of an eye fuck, wouldn't you? Well, it ain't. I mean, look at this. Once you get past the story bit and you get thrown into the game, yes, thrown into the game, it feels like all of a sudden, boom, go! Oh, shit, okay. It kind of just like the Mega Drive one. It's just, uh, 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 you feel a bit panicky. But it's handled it really well. There's no, like, frame rate issues. There's no shittiness of the color. It doesn't look drowned out. It doesn't look all watery. It doesn't look pixely, fuckery, shittery. It looks surprisingly Good to read. God, I could write my own dictionary at this rate. So what is the story behind Dynamite Heady? Who cares? You're a little prick who throws your head at things. There you are. There's the story. That's all that matters. Is the game good? Yes. It is bloody good. But unfortunately, very few people are ever going to get to try the Master System one because it's rare. It's very rare. Which is why I thought it'd be a good one to talk about as opposed to doing Miracle Warriors again. The music, to be honest, is crap. I don't like it. It's not brilliant. But the gameplay, the game mechanics with the way the head works and all that, is surprisingly good, despite the fact that you would think, thanks to the Master System controller's D-pad, it would be a bit wanky. It's not. It's actually still pretty good. The way you can grab hold of things, fling yourself around, hitting enemies, it's all pretty good. If you see me slip up in the game footage, it's because I haven't played this one much and with damn good reason, so I'm a bit shit. But luckily we're here to check out graphics, not how rubbish I am at a game. Well, hell, it'd be a long video. I will be honest, though, by the time you get to level three, it does become a bit of an eyesore. I haven't beaten the game, so I haven't checked out every level to see what it's like. 
But yeah, when I got to level 3, that was the first time it was a bit like, ooh, that's, that, yeah, mm-hmm. Bit much there, but everything up to that point, I can't complain. It was surprisingly good. This is a very good game. I wish more people could try it. Good luck doing so, though. Next game, Deep Duck Trouble. Now, when it comes to Donald Duck, I have to say one of the original games that I had as a kid, one of the first games I had out of that nine that I've mentioned in the past, was Donald Duck Lucky Dime Caper. And that game looks fantastic, and it probably should have been mentioned here today. But you know what? I've never liked it. And I know that's a sin. Many Master System people will go, What? That game's fantastic! How can you hate it? Well, I do, so there. So I wanted to mention Deep Duck Trouble, which is a game I don't own. And I really should just bite the bullet and purchase it soon, because the price is just going... It's, fuck, it's fucking nuts. It's getting really expensive. Deep Duck Trouble has very similar graphics compared to Lucky Dime Caper, but the gameplay is far better, in my opinion, on Deep Duck Trouble. And it has new little animations. Like, when you're standing around, Donald does more. If you're in a level and it's cold, he shakes. If you get certain power-ups, he runs like fuck. He screams at enemies. It's truly incredible the amount of effort gone into the simple animation of your character. That's why I think this is better than like a dime caper. It's just the creators clearly put in more attention to detail, and that's what it's all about when it comes to graphics, let's be honest. It's funny though, because when the game starts up, I only just noticed this because I've got this sodding thing going on in the background. The island at the start of Deep Duck Trouble, uh, Deep, Duck, uh, Deep, Duck, uh, Deep Duck Trouble looks like the fucking island from the start of Sonic 1. It just does. Here's a comparison. Okay, it's not identical, but it's fucking similar. Give me a break. Level 1 of this game doesn't really show off the sort of graphics we want for the scenery. But when you get to the next bit of the same level with the jungle and shit, then it really shows off some of the graphics. And when you get to, like, the boss of that area, just look at this. Look at what Donald is doing. Normally, your little character is just like... Standing there. There's a boss. Not gonna move. Even on 16-bit games, there's a boss. Don't care, I'm not moving. I'm happy like this. He's gonna kill me, man. I don't give a fuck. But on this, he's straight away looking up and going, Shit! There's animation. There's effort. It looks great. This is a fantastic game, and I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and spend some money, aren't I? There's very few, very few games on a Master System that are fantastic that I don't already own, and that's because I've gone out of my way to buy the games that play great as opposed to the ones that are rare or just valuable or any of that bollocks. There's only a few left that um, I really want, really want. Uh, I, as everyone knows, I really want Street Fighter 2. Thanks to having played Virtual Fighter 2, that's actually fantastic on the Master System. I want that one. But again, that's a lot of money. So in the realistic spectrum of games, Deep Duck Trouble is one of the few I don't have yet. And as you can see, I fucking need it. Next game, Chuck Rock 2, a son of Chuck. This is a weird one. A lot of people in the Master System world know about Chuck Rock, the first one. I don't like that one, really. It's, it's not bad, but it sure as shit isn't great. It's not... I can see why the series kind of died. But the sequel is bloody good, especially for your character's animation. If you look at, uh, what's, what's it called, Chuck Rock Jr., the baby, look at the animation involved in this guy. Just from swinging his fucking club downwards, the mouth opening wide, the effort involved there. It's quite good. It's Honestly, it, it really is good, but it does come at a cost. It's one of them ones where... Unlike Deep Duck Trouble, where the animation is fantastic and doesn't hinder the gameplay, Chuck Rock 2, it does hinder the gameplay. When you go to swing your fucking club at an enemy, you have to take into account that rather than a game that doesn't have animation, well, doesn't have as much animation, it's just sort of instant, isn't it? Like, dunk. With Chuck Rock 2, it's like, hey, yeah, but in the time you've gone hit, the cunts hit you. Or just walked up and touched you, and of course that still hurts in these games. So... They've overdone it with the animation here. It's come at the cost of the gameplay because of the motion, because of that. And you can adapt. You will suck at first. It's the sort of game you play and you're like, well, I've got to have 
early reaction syndrome. I got to be prepared for the bullshit that's about to come my way. You will adapt. You will. But it's a shame that you have to. Another thing I will say that really doesn't help is I swear the hit detection is a bit off. I swear it is. Maybe I'm just being super crap. Crapper than normal. But I feel like the hit detection is just a little bit... Mm. You know what I mean? It's just sort of... Mm. However, it's not just Chuck that's been improved with graphics. It's also the scenery. Now, normally with the sort of game that has great graphics in terms of scenery, you think parallax scrolling, you think, um, I don't know, more use of colours. What you don't think is stuff like this, where you see a bird squeaking above or eyes blinking below. These serve no purpose. They don't do anything to the game. That's not a bird I can kill, I don't think. Maybe I'll try that later. Uh, those eyes, you definitely can't get though. So it's just them little details, those nice little details. I think the best example I can give of an 8-bit game that does that, Mr. Gimmick on NES. That's got one scene where Gimmick just goes out and there's like seagulls flying in the distance. So it's no fucking purpose. It's there simply because the game creators wanted to show some graphic abilities. They didn't want to just go slap, flat background, nothing happening. They wanted to push things. They wanted to try different things. They wanted to just have a bit of life, like you're in a jungle. Well, a jungle has a lot of life going on in it, so let's have some life, shall we? Let's have some living things rather than tree. Rock. Rock. Tree. Let's have a bird. Let's have some mysterious eyes. Let's have some cool shit. They made an effort. So I think it's worth talking about today, which we have done. Next game, Golden Axe Warrior. Now, this is a much more well-known game, I would say, especially because it's a Zelda clone. But not only is it a Zelda clone, I think it's probably the best example of what we would have had if... The Zelda game, the original one for NES, was also released on Master System. Obviously, there's a million reasons why that didn't happen. Let's not go into that. I mean, it's pretty fucking obvious. But if you slap Link's face onto the Golden Axe Warrior, you'd be like, oh, okay. So this is the difference between the consoles. And you have to say, graphically, this is a great game. Um, is it the most impressive in terms of graphics we're mentioning today? Probably not, but I still feel like this is one worth talking about because so many people go on about, oh, you know, Sega vs. Nintendo, Zelda this, no Zelda that. Oh, they had A Link to the Past. We had Salil or Crusader Ascenti. It's like, yes, but also in the 8-bit realm, we had this. Or something else. Put, put, no. What's that little cunt's name? Google it. <laughs> Pit Pot! That was the other one. There's, there's another Zelda-like game on 8-bit Master Systems called Pit Pot. It's a surprisingly great game. Uh, great fuck. Surprisingly great game, but it only came out as part of a uh, combi cart with Mark's from Safari Zone or some bollocks. I can't remember. It didn't have its own cartridge, which never made any sense to me. It's a unique game. Why the fuck doesn't it have a unique cartridge? We will never know. But... I, it took me so long to find out why what his name was. I've forgotten why I brought it up. Shit. <laughs> Any hoops. With the Golden Axe Warrior gameplay, it is one of them games, unfortunately, where you have to grind from the word go. you got to start training yourself up. So in that respect, the Zelda, the original Zelda, won instantly. Because that's, get up, go, fuck off, kill stuff, do what you want. Bleh. Golden Axe Warrior, no, you're weak. You need money. You need experience. You need stuff like that. Great. So the gameplay is not as good, but we're on about the graphics today. Would you say it looks better than Zelda? Uh, fuck yes. We're only talking about appearance. Graphics. Yes. This is a game worth mentioning today, but it's one that I don't understand why people go so nuts over. Because the gameplay is a bit of a slog. You know, it doesn't feel as rewarding as you would expect. You know. So... Good game, great graphics. To be fair, I nearly forgot the uh, s starting bit, the opening scenes and shit. They're not too bad for graphics. They're not amazing, they're not mind-blowing, but they certainly aren't bad. The way I keep saying ain't bad is make me wonder why I picked this game. So I'm just going to go on to the next one now. Next game. And in fact, the last game of Sagaya. 
Now, the reason why I picked this game is because this is one that does graphics in a much more different light, really. Some of the things this game does, you would expect to completely kill the gameplay. You would expect it to cause massive slowdown. So, look at level one here. All of that shit going on in the background, you really would think there would be a massive amount of slowdown. You would expect the game to be completely shit because of what the console is having to do. And then you look at all the enemies on the screen. It's still going. This isn't an emulator, by the way. I'm playing the actual game cartridge. All right, I was recording it on my Mega SG down here. Love this thing. But it, it's the original cartridge, and it was doing it fine. It was having no problems. No frame rate issues, no slowdown. Bit of flicker in here and there, but big fucking deal. So this first level, The Sun, I believe it's called, you got to admit, for what it is, while it doesn't look like much, back then when it came out, this must have been quite a sight, really. I mean, it's pulling it off. It's doing a great job of it. The funny thing is, I can't deny, I prefer the look of the later levels. Um, I can't remember which level's what, like there's a Venus and Moon and Mars. I can't remember what name is akin to what level. But I do know, having played the game and nearly beaten the bastard, nearly, and I fucked it near the end, the levels do look pretty awesome. This one in particular, which I would guess is the moon, it's a great game. And it has level select, by the way. The only thing is, while you can sort of determine which level to go to as you progress, there are a couple of levels where you go to and you think, ah, oh, I've fucked this now, I shouldn't have picked this level. This is a death. Some levels definitely feel easier than others. Especially for a shmup. There's not much more I can go into, really, with this one. I mean, I thought maybe I'd talk about Fantasy Zone, but I feel like that's one I've covered a lot in the past as well. So today was about showing you some games that I haven't spoken about that much at all. And I think I've picked a fairly good selection. What do you think? Are these the games you would have picked? What do you think of Sagaya for a shmup? Is it the best looking one on the console? Probably not, but it is a bloody good one. In terms of appearance and graphics, it does look bloody good, and it's gone through a lot. You know, all of that with the sun level, and it's still played fine. Give it its dues, it should have been shit. It should have run very badly, but it didn't. Golden Axe Warrior? Looks great, I can understand why people think it's so fantastic, but when you actually play it, it's a little on the dull side for me, you know? And, um, uh, Deep Duck Trouble, um salivation it's just i want that fucking game i want it and let's just end it there thank you very much for watching today's video if you enjoyed it please click like comment subscribe and all that other pony we youtubers have to say because reasons thank you very much for watching once again and i'll see you next time